Praise the Lord. I'm going to start in just a second. I'll see if somebody logs in while I finish setting up here and getting organized a little better. Before we start Bible study, I hope people log in or listen to this teaching. Make sure you share the teaching because it's it is vital at this time and place for the for the church. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, praise the Lord Jesus. And I do praise him for being there. And I'm going to get started because I'm going to me I am going to have to divide this into two different Tuesday night studies because there was so much information. So tonight is uh, and I'll get into it. Let's have some prayer first. That God will lead and guide us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for this time that we gather together to learn and to seek your advice and st to study and seek your word. Lord, as we talk, share this, as we talk about this, Lord, that you be pleased and blessed and help us to, but most of all, the word that we teach, Lord, that it be applied to our lives, that we might go forth and hear what you say and do it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name and praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You logged in on time. I'm just getting started. I just had prayer and you need to share this. This will be a two-part series. And of course, it's on like I've been announcing, this is about persecution is the title. Persecution. Tonight will be what it, mostly what it is and how it was about in, amen, and in the, <clears throat> how it has shown its face, you might say, persecution has to the people in According to the Bible, what the Bible has to say about persecution and does it affect us? And we're going to start talking about that. And and next week, I'll finish up, hopefully, if not the third week. But uh, this will be what it is. How does it apply? What is it? What is it like? What is it? What happened in the Bible in some of these instances? But. Next week will be, uh, all right, how to us today, what do we do when we face persecution? And I'll be giving some of my testimony, too, as I go along, because I've been through it. I know, I expect, because God had pro gave me a prophecy, it's been given to other church ministers, and it's in the Bible, and I'm going to read one of the scriptures, maybe, if I get to it tonight, talking about that persecution must happen before all this end stuff happens. And the U United States has had a little bit, and many countries and many people uh, have not experienced the persecution that they had that the Bible talks about. And a lot of people think they've been under persecution, but I'm going to, show you what does the Bible say really what is persecution according to the word of God all right tonight we're going to start with the main this will be the main scripture for this lesson second Timothy three twelve, and you might want to have some paper and pencil to write down notes because there's a lot of information also along with this that you can study on your own it says second Timothy three twelve. the Bible tells us indeed all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. All those that live godly. All right, what is it, those people that live godly? We will suffer persecution if we live godly. Are, who are these people? Who are these ones that will be persecuted? It's the godly are the ones that are very devout, holy, and committed to God, and obedient to Him, and close to Him, and completely sold out to Him. Why will we be persecuted? Because we're different from the world, and not of this world. 
and not part of it. Like the scripture says, you're of this world, but you're not in it. You're not part of this. And I'm going to read some script, uh, commentaries on this in the next scripture out of two different study Bibles. I'll get to it here. Out of Timothy. Uh, I just. There it is. There's a Bible study bu book here. Life, stu Life study Bible. And it's a Pentecost study Bible. I'm going to read. There were some comments about persecution. And I thought I would read it instead of try to re comment on this. And this Bible said that persecution oops, persecution and the godly are loyal to Christ his truth and his righteous standards involves constant determination not to compromise our faith or give in to the deluge of voices calling us to conform to the world and lay aside scriptural truth. Because of their godly standards, the faithful will be deprived of the privilege of privilege and will be ridiculed. They will experience grief at seeing godliness rejected by the majority. So it's the godly and those that will be persecuted that are loyal to Christ and to his righteous standing and to the truth of the true gospel of Christ and willing to stand regardless of the enemy what the enemy does and I'll read that same thing out of Perry Stone's I have Perry Stone's study Bible and he had something to say about the word persecution too Because the godly will suffer persecution. He said, we are not persecuted because we be just believe in God. As all the world religions believe in some kind of God. However, uh, see, because there's people that believe in God. And, or believe in their religions. Or have a, believe in something that they may go through something for that religion, but the persecution literally is something else. The biblical persecution is, is something else. However, our personal commitment to holy living and separating oneself from the pleasures of the world often subject dedicated believers to the verbal slander and assault. The word persecution means to to pursue or to drive away. Satan initiates persecution to, pr to pressure believers away from God's word and his promises. So it's to drive away, and I'll t talk about that in a minute. But the next scripture is, I'm just pretty much getting started. In Matthew, the main scripture is 2 Timothy 3.12, I just talked about. And Matthew 5, 10 and 12. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness. That's true persecution. For the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you. And falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. This is Christ talking. Because of Christ. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And I'm going to read a note out of this study Bible again. This is very interesting. Be for righteousness sake. Persecuted for righteousness sake. All who seek to live in harmony with the word of God for the sake of righteousness. That is the holy ones, the godly ones. Those who uphold God's standards 
of truth, justice, and purity, and who at the same time refuse to compromise with the present evil society of the lifestyles of lukewarm believers. Also, it said Christians must be aware of the temptation to compromise God's will in order to avoid shame, embarrassment, or loss. Persecution of the church. Persecution of our beliefs. Persecution is truly what it means is to draw away, entice, or drive us away from the righteousness and the truth of God. It is hostility, ill treatments, because of Christ and his truth. Not for any other reason but the gospel. No other reason but the true word of God. When we're standing and we're trying to live for God, you're going to face persecution, as the scripture in Timothy says. All will face if you're godly, if you're devout, if you're sold out to God, if you're living for him 100%, you're going to deal with persecution. It is also a tribulation, not the great tribulation. Tribulation is anguish, burden, troubles, pressure, and crush, and afflictions, and distress, and burdensome weights to try to change your mind, try to convince you to uh, go against the gospel, go against the word of God. Will you be able to stand under that pressure? Think about it. That Persecution is true pressure under the gospel, about the gospel. It is a time of testing to prove and try us in our faith and our confidence in God. To try us to see if we come out as pure gold. In 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7. In this you greatly rejoice. That's, what is that? Tribulation and trials. In the trials, in the tribulations, in the in the persecution, greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even through test, though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So you may be found with honor, that you may be found pure and holy. You're standing for God, regardless that you're not going to give in to the, the enticements of this world, the enticements of, of uh, the things and what this world would tell us to do, to go against what the Bible tells us. Why do you think I've been saying for the longest time, every time I teach, what does the Bible have to say about it? What does the Word of God say? What does God say? That's one we should... And then when the enemy causes us to come against and turn our backs on the, on the truth, we're under persecution or try to turn, get us to turn. But we need to stand anyway. All right, there were some people in the Bible, I'm going to just mention a few that is very obvious, but a couple of them I learned about too, is some people in the Bible, of course, we know Christ was persecuted. He was persecuted by the church, the known synagogue and the leaders in the church. Elijah was persecuted by Jezebel and others because he was trying to get the people to live right for God. Zechariah, he was a priest's son, but that didn't uh, uh, keep him from being persecuted. In fact, because he, he spoke to the king and spoke to the people of Israel and told them to repent, the king ordered him to be stoned on the steps of the synagogue. On his father's temple. Jeremiah was ridiculed for his spoken uh, coming against Daniel. He was thrown in the lion's den. That's one example anyway. There's many other places. 
Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? As we, the story, they were thrown into a fire. And God delivered them. Paul, he, he persecuted the Christians in uh, um, Acts 8, I believe. Talked about Stephen being stoned, which Stephen is one of the persecuted. He was stoned. He was there. He helped to persecute the Christians. But he was also, after he gave his life to the Lord and sold himself out to God and committed to God, he became persecuted. He was persecuted by the Romans. He was persecuted by his own leaders. And he's persecuted by even other people in the church because they didn't think he qualif was qualified, you know, because he was one of the persecutors. Peter and John, they were put in prison. Paul was put in prison too many times. Many of the apostles in the New Testament. Many of the New Testament church were crucified. Think about John the Beloved, how he was crucified and persecuted. But John the Beloved, here he was boiled in oil and then set on an uh, exiled. Because of because he was believing in Christ, because he was a follower of Christ. See, persecution comes to the godly are not just the believers; they are ones that live and were followers and the actual disciples. There's a big difference between being just being a believer and a disciple. Disciple does the works of Christ. The types of persecution mentioned in the Bible, I, I found a list here, and I wrote it down. There was beatings, stoning, scourging or flogging, stripes, smiting, slap the face, slap the body, you know, striking somebody. There was martyrs, people, Christians that were martyred. They were mocked. Reviled. Reviled means evil was spoken of them. They had lies told on them. Crucifixions. Humiliations. There was prison. They were thrown in the fire. They were put in chains. They were tortured. They were sawn in two. Their bodies literally cut in two with a saw. Tempted. They were put to death. They were afflicted. They were ill-treated. They were forced from homes. They became destitute. They were kicked out of their churches and synagogues, synagogues and places of worship. That was in the Bible. All right, I'm going to go through a list of things that happened since the Bible. Since the Bible. Also, I didn't mention this. This happened during the Bible, during the time of Roman rule and, and after that, that the Roman gladiators and Roman games, they actually blame Christians for the burning of Rome and different things like that and put them in, uh, they were killed. And I just read a little bit ago that they, some one article said there was about 3,000 Christians that were killed in these games for, the, for being believers of Christ, for following Christ. But there's also persecution that's happened since the biblical times and since the New Testament church. The New Testament church was per persecuted during the Bible times and at, and after because the New Testament church was uh, persecuted by Constantine. Around 300 AD, there were up until this point, many Christians, many cities, many communities were completely saved. Many people were living for God. But because of Constantine, he wanted that glory 
instead of, and taken it away from Christ and away from God, declared the preaching and teaching only to be done in the buildings of the cathedrals that he had built. And the Jews were not allowed there. The Jews were, and they were outlawed from worshiping the Masonic way of believing in Christ, the Messiah and the biblical way of the seven feasts that was commanded in Leviticus 23. That's why it discontinued in the church because of Constantine. But we need to get back to it. He outlawed that law and he wanted people not to worship Jesus, but to worship his son, S-U-N, God. He worshiped the son and he built his cathedrals to where you had to face the east or face the sun. Many people during that time were put in prison and killed and for the for their beliefs and for their standing strong and many stood strong and during that time and because of Constantine a lot of the Catholic Church was started and their belief systems and he fought many t they the Christian Church the Catholic Church fought many what times in those early days, in the late days later in Europe, in the Trent, see they had the Trent Latin Bible and only the priest understood what it said and could read it. But they tried to stop the Bible, Tinsdale Bible, the King James Bible, the different Bibles from being translated so the people could read it in their own language. The Inquisitions, the Inquisitions was a time by the church, the Catholic, known Catholic church at that time, and the Spanish leadership, the Pope started, and I didn't, I knew it was, there was an Inquisition, but I didn't know it lasted this long, it happened close to 1200 A.D., up even up till 1826 was when it stopped. That's many, many years. And what was the Inquisition? It was horrible torturing and questioning, trying to stop anything but the Catholic teaching from coming about. It, the pro, trying to stop the Protestant church, trying to stop any other religion, any other church from happening other than the Catholic church. And I've read years ago, and I don't remember a lot of I've read, but there was a lot of, I have some uh, little booklets that showed some of the cr crazy things that were t done to try to get them to admit and to come back to Christ and deny, <coughs> come back to the church, the Catholic church, and deny their, the, uh, their, their, beliefs outside that church also the Jews were were being persecuted and were refused worship during the 1400s and the 1600s see and they came to the Americas and helped settle America to get the freedom to worship to have freedom to truly worship God Right. In World War II, the Jews and Christians were thrown in concentration camps, murdered and tortured and used as guinea, medical guinea pigs. And persecuted. And think about it. During the time, it was just a few years back that ISIS was prevalent. And remember I never forget the Coptic Christians in Egypt because it was very prevalent even on the news that they believed in Christ and the ISIS cut their throats saying 
wanting them to de be, deny any other religion other than Islam. To deny and come back. To, so that was what the ISIS was all about. Trying to make people convert to Islam. Of course, in recent history in the United States, there's one good example. There's other examples, but there's one that just never leaves my mind because it was in, it happened nearby here in Col Columbine, Colorado. A few, I don't can't remember the date. I should have looked it up. A high school girl. There was this uh, gunman, a young man that was gunman that was. I believe demon possessed went into the school to shoot people and he knew this girl was a Christian and he went to her personally and he asked her to deny Christ so her life may be saved. She says, no, she would. She said, I want to die for Christ. I'm not going to give up my, my stance in God. See, that's standing whether she faced death, but she did not deny or pull back. See, that's what persecution is, is trying to get you to, uh, Change your mind about your uh, stand and where you, your life in Christ. And because of, and she was shot and killed, but because of her death, there was a testimony of many people becoming Christians, realizing, yes, she could do it. It'd be wonderful. She, it must have been something good about it. Think about it just in recent with 2020 and it uh, with the COVID and it's happened all over the world, some of it, <clears throat> that churches were ordered to shut down and shut their mouths and shut the God and stop the gospel. It was, that's the whole purpose of it was to stop the gospel. That's why the mask were to stop the giving the word of God. And how many churches gave in to that? Being per the church. All right, I'll I'll give you this one too, and then I'm gonna speak some more. It says a pastor in Canada. It's in recent. It's just in the last couple of years. He was put in prison for worshiping in his own house with his own family, only his family. He's in from Canada, and his. Church was taken away and chained. He was even worshiping outside in the, in, in the, where it was safe to worship, you know. But because of Canada and law, that you could not worship God. And he was put in prison and jail and went to court many times over that situation. These are just some examples of persecution since the Bible. And there are many exa more examples in recent times, but things. But I do know this by the Scripture and by what the Word of God says, and what and what uh, God has prophesied through me and many others. There is yet to be persecution, strong persecution, coming to the church, especially in America and the countries that have not faced it yet. See, there's a lot of people that need to face persecution. Because the scripture says, what did it say in Timothy? Uh, let me go back. To 2 Timothy 3, 12. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. If you're going to be a godly person, if you're going to be committed to Christ, you're going to have to go through something. Because there's many that have not been tested and tried. There's not many that has been tested and tried. There's some that have, but there's others. There's still a lot to... <clears throat> and when you think about all that happened, what happened because of the persecution in the recent histories and different things, what happened? The church grew because of persecution. Even in the New Testament church. More was done for God because of the persecution. Because Why? Because somebody was so committed and that was persecuted, so committed they will not get down. Just like Peter and John when they were put in prison. 
they start worshiping God and an earthquake hit and but they were able to witness and testify to the jailers and to win souls had a prayer meeting had a had a church service in jail and God released them all right there's ways that persecution comes there might be some other things besides the, the but these are main general ways that persecution will come ways that come to you and I can tell you for a fact, except for one, I barely have gone through it, but I've gone through all of these. I know there may be still some more because of what needs to come to the church this, and to the Christians in the United States and other ways, and other places too. There's persecution will come from Satan and demonic attack on your physical health. See, I've had health issues for many, many years because it was an attack of the enemy to stop me from going and preaching the gospel. I felt that in the spirit and God showed uh, someone I had pray for me that it was a, the enemy to stop me from going to overseas to preach the gospel at that moment. And that's when I got sick. And I'm still trying to God has told me he's going to get me total health. And it is an attack on your spirit. And on your mind. See, I've had demon Satan himself come to me. Years ago, after an all-night prayer meeting, seeking God. And I was sold out. And I was strong in the Lord at that time. You know, just after pr praying all night and knowing the word, I was strong. I had Satan himself come to me and say he was Coming to kill me. But I said, you can't kill me till God is done and I leave. And he has to do that. I've had demons come at night trying to kill me. One time it was real bad. And it tried to bring fear. And work on my mind and spirit to bring fear. Trying to physically kill me and destroy me. And work against me and all these things. Other things that other persecutions you go through may affect also your spiritual mind and spirit and your uh, your physical mind because of what you're going through. But we need to stay strong. Also, witchcraft. I've had witchcraft come to me a few different times. The last example was witchcraft that was because of somebody was mad at me and prayed against us. See if you you can you can do witchcraft if you pray against what God has had because of a, with a spirit of anger or being mean. And there was I know who it was that prayed against our ministry. I felt something happened, and I knew what it was two years ago when my husband got had this uh, episode and this. We thought a stroke, but it ended up being something else. And trying to take his mind, trying to take his mind, trying to take his body and his strength. It was prayed witchcraft over us. It bounced off of me because I was spiritually strong and he wasn't. And hit him. And I've had, and he is now coming and getting the victory. He's not complete there yet, but when... I've noticed since he's been through this, think about it. When you go through persecution, when you go through a troubles, you'll come out stronger. You're more spiritually anointed because you know, I've been it through it. I've had it. And so I know that God can do things because I noticed anytime he does something spiritually or praying for somebody, it's more powerful than it was before. We will get this one. I haven't had too much of it, but from the world and the government a little bit lately because of telling us we had to shut down the church, but I did not give in trying to tell me that I've, you know, tell me to give up my church and, you know, through others trying to tell me to give up my church. And I said, you can't, I can't shut down unless because it's God's way until God tells me I cannot do it. 
got to stand strong. And how many churches and how many people gave in to the government, gave in to the world to shut their mouths to stop the gospel? This is the sad part that I've had persecution comes from the your church, own, sometimes your own church, your fellow Christians, even pastors and ministers. I've had many ministers come against me. My own father and uh, another minister came against me and spoke words and he got cancer, throat cancer. <clears throat> And fellow Christians, some of them were real close. To, I was even close to spoke things and spoke things against and tried to present lies and tried to uh, get the you know. Uh, there was one pastor's wife I was real f close to that she spoke things well because my husband worked away from home and my I had a little girl and she, the devil used her to speak things that trying to tell everybody that I slept with her husband. And, amen. And slept with her husband. And because of that, and, I mean, and I didn't know half of what was going on. I, there was people that came to church just to, because I would testify how the goodness of God when it was time to testify. And because I was still able to testify and I wasn't really realizing I was being stabbed in the back. I was, those people, there was people that came to church waiting to hear me testify because they knew the lies were being said and, and they were pushing in to receive more of God. See, that's the type of thing persecution will cause people to come to God. And fellow Christians, and I have, even my elder, I mean, literally do things against our, uh, that was against me and, and, uh, di different things. That's just the most recent one, you know, and different ones speaking things against ministry. I've had a pastor come against me and told me to leave town and all, all kinds of stuff. So the, and even Jesus had put up with, the known synagogue and church leaders and he was crucified then by them you will have family come against you because what is it because pers because it's you're living fully for the lord see i have a grandchild that died because of it my own daughter one day Kate said uh started mocking with you know, of course she was getting hyped up with her friend in the kitchen and mocking me as a minister and i came back and god told me she was pregnant and that that baby would die and i asked for mercy from god and of course she lost the baby a few weeks later so that baby's in heaven right now you know, I just remember, thought about that. I thought, I got a grandbaby in heaven. You know, I may not have any on earth, but I have one in heaven. And I had my father who was jealous and tried to fight me in, when I was being assistant pastor and a music leader of my mother's church. And, you know, and different things throughout history have had pastors come against me and speak against me. I've had a minister publicly come against me as a woman minister to, and told me, even wanted, told me to give up my tent. It was at a tent revival, my own tent revival. And it was, where there was me and another uh, minister I was, that was teaching me the tent meetings. That, uh, and this other gentleman, he came and publicly came against me uh, in front of everybody. He left that tent meeting, and from then on, he he fell back into drugs and fell back away from God. So you can't come against the anointing and against the holy ones of God. Church and family, 
and friends people you can call friends will stab you in the back whether they're christian or non-christian okay what did i say persecution was i'll go back to the meaning of that persecution is anything to entice you and draw you away from the righteousness and truth of god it is sometimes ill treatments and and hostilities and lies it can be burdensome it can have pressure and try to crush you trying to destroy you what does the scripture says the enemy satan has come to kill steal and destroy the things of the lord it's a time of testing to whether we're going to stay strong are we going to stay strong or are we going to give in to this persecution Okay, I'm going to read a, I think I'll read one more scripture. Okay, I'll read, I'll read just one more scripture and then we'll end it there because of time. And we'll get back to the lesson next week. Luke 21, 12 through 19. But before all these things. They will lay their hands on you and will persecute you, delivering you to the synagogues and prisons, bringing you before kings and governors for my name's sake. It will lead to an opportunity for your testimony. So make up your minds not to pre prepare beforehand to defend yourself, for I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of these opponents will be able to resist and refute. But you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. Not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. So it's a time of People will, what is it, even the government says, if you see something, say something. That's starting into the what? To report somebody to when they do something. All right, it says, bef when it said before these things, it's before, it, before that scripture, there was listings of things that we're seeing to come to pass. It says before these things, they're happening, but they're going to happen even stronger and worse. And before that happens, he said, you're going to have to be persecuted. The church is going to have to be persecuted. Then all the great tribulation, then all the other things will happen. This is a strong edict that he's, Jesus said that the church has to go through persecution before the final end, before everything is to take place. We must have persecution, like the scripture says. Everybody must be tested. To see if they're fine gold tested to see if they're going to stand for Christ in the time of trouble. Because if you can't stand in the, in the little bits of persecution and little bit of lies and little thing, the small things, how are you going to stand in the, when the enemy really comes up against you? When the, uh, Antichrist system comes in and wants to kill you if you don't make it in the rapture, it is. Some will be behind, left behind. They will bring you before church leaders and courts and, and world leaders. That's what the scripture said. You will be brought before to, with lies or anything against the gospel. Make your, your mind, this is what's in strong, you, but you got to make up your mind to stay strong and be obedient to God. Let God speak and work through you. Don't be afraid, even if it means death. God will defend you. And persecution will cause changes. Changes in others. Changes in yourself. Changes in... And a t way of testimony. And a chance to witness and win souls. So welcome the persecution. I'm going to stop there tonight. Welcome the persecution. Because we want to see souls being saved. Because there's no, 
God is waiting and wanting people to be saved. So share this video and hope someone got something out of this to understand persecution and how it, the enemy wants to keep us to destroy the gospel, to destroy our, our stand and our walk with God and stop us and make us turn around and tempt us to forget God and deny Christ. So, and next week I'll go into the rest of this lesson. So, welcome, because we will have persecution. Be Get ready for it. Share this video. So we're going to continue this lesson next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central. So, share and and invite others to listen. Praise the Lord.